I'm never entirely sure how to answer the question, who is your favorite author? In fact, my answer seems to change with the seasons. But if you were to ask me that question in the fall, there's a pretty good chance I'd go for Ray Bradbury. One of the most prolific and admired science fiction and fantasy authors of all time, Bradbury is a reader's writer. What I mean by that is that most people who love to read the classics love to read Bradbury. You see, Bradbury constantly pays homage to the writers who've inspired him. In The Martian Chronicles, a post-apocalypse world contains an automated house that keeps running even though all the inhabitants are long dead. Bradbury names this short story after Sarah Teasdale's poem, there will come soft rains. The mechanical hound in Fahrenheit 451 that hunts down fugitives with terrifying accuracy was inspired by Arthur Conan Doyle's hound in The Hound of the Baskervilles. And my personal favorite Bradbury novel, Something Wicked This Way Comes, gets its title from The Witches in Macbeth. But Bradbury's best literary love letter is addressed to the original American master of the macabre, Edgar Allan Poe. Appropriately named Usher II, the story opens with Mr. Stendhal quoting a few lines from Poe's famous short story. But the house in question is no longer confined to the realm of Poe's imagination. Instead, it stands before Stendhal's very eyes. As the lead architect, Mr. Bigelow, details, this is no ordinary house, but rather a perfect recreation of Poe's literary mansion of terror, the House of Usher. And no expense has been spared. Beyond the house itself, the architect tells us, You notice it's always twilight here. This land, always October. Barren, sterile, dead. It took a bit of doing. We killed everything. 10,000 tons of DDT. Not a snake, frog, or Martian fly left. Wait, Martian fly? Oh yeah, this story <laughs> takes place on Mars. So let's backtrack for a bit of context. You see, Usher 2 comes from Bradbury's famous collection, The Martian Chronicles, though technically it didn't debut there. Anyway, this collection of short stories details humankind's first landing, colonization, and eventual full exploitation of Mars. Usher 2 falls into the late colonization period. Earthlings have been on Mars for some time already, doing their pillaging and destroying everything thing. And now, people with enough money, like Mr. Stendhal, who's worth $25 million, and can afford to build Usher 2, are leaving Earth to start a new life on Mars. Since it's set in what was at the time a futuristic world, Usher 2 takes place in 2005, the story is full of robots, helicopters, and technology. Bradbury brings all of that into Poe's world, but the terror that Poe is famous for? That remains the same. And if you're a fan of such terror, then you're in for a treat. As the story unfolds, Bradbury masterfully weaves in references to the telltale heart, the pit and the pendulum, the premature burial, the cask of Amontillado, the murders in the Rue Morgue, the mask of the Red Death, and of course, the fall of the House of Usher. But Usher too goes beyond just transplanting Poe's storyline into the Red Planet. Because, you see, Mr. Stendhal could have created Usher 2 on Earth for a lot cheaper, I'd assume. Except that in this world that Bradbury has created, it's against the law to do something like that on Earth. Like many of Bradbury's stories, Usher 2 is a warning against the dangers of censorship. When asked why he built this house to begin with, Stendhal rails against what happened on Earth. Mr. Poe, he died long ago. All his books were burned in the Great Fire. That's 30 years ago. 1975. And it wasn't just Poe who fell victim to this artistic purge. Every man, they said, must face reality, must face the here and now. Everything that was not so must go. All the beautiful literary lies and flights of fancy must be shot in midair. So they lined them up against a library wall one Sunday morning 30 years ago in 1975. They lined them up. St. Nicholas and the Headless Horseman and Snow White and Rumpelstiltskin, and Mother Goose, oh what a wailing, and shot them down and burned the paper castles, and the fairy frogs, and the old kings, and the people who lived happily ever after, for of course, it was a fact that nobody lived happily ever after. And once upon a time became no more, and they spread the ashes of the phantom rickshaw with the rubble of the land of Oz, 
They filleted the bones of Glinda the Good and Ozma and shattered polychrome in a stereoscope and served Jack Pumpkinhead with meringue at the biologist's ball. The beanstalk died in a bramble of red tape. Sleeping Beauty awoke at the kiss of a scientist and expired at the fatal puncture of his syringe. All this was done in the name of realism, in the name of never offending anyone, and it was carried out by the moral climate people. Stendhal was one of the last holdouts, but eventually the moral climate people found his library too and destroyed every one of his 50,000 works. So Stendhal escaped to Mars, where he could be an eccentric homeowner and read his books in peace. Or so he thought. Less than 24 hours after the completion of his own monumental House of Usher, the moral climate people show up. Newly arrived to Mars, they're eager to pick up where they left off on Earth. I could tell you more about the short story, but I don't want to give too much away, and I really think you should read it on your own. So there's a link in the description where you could pick up a copy of The Martian Chronicles if you're interested. Let me leave you with this, though, about the story. Usher 2 is a love letter to Poe, movies, space, and the imagination. But like many of Bradbury's works, it's also a cautionary tale. With its 1950 publication, Bradbury simultaneously reflects on the Nazi Nuremberg book burnings, as well as foreshadows the rise of McCarthyism in the U.S. But modern readers will also hear echoes of Stendhal's tale about a world so concerned with being correct that no artist or work is safe from cancellation. Like anything I've read from Bradbury, Usher 2 is both timely and timeless. So check it out, and happy reading. Thank you for watching.